Musings, a casual conversation about culture and theology. I'm Jess Neely. And I'm Daniel Chen. And we're, wow, I almost oh, forgot. I, I almost did it for you. We're just a couple <laughs> guys have. talking about some stuff. Man, thanks. Sorry, I was thinking about my life hack and literally just blanked. You know what I was thinking about? This is day 265 where Apple has still not changed our logo. Man. Freaking Apple. I don't know if it's day 265, but it's a, it's a lot of days. Welcome it's funny. I, I did that yesterday at church where I literally just blanked on that was a one funny of our moment. events. Yeah, I was just like, it's funny. I was telling myself what it was called right before I went up there. And, and I like, psyched myself out and forgot what it was called. <laughs> then I was looking at you and I was like, is he talking about the paintball thing? Or is he talking about, so I was like, uh. And then I kind of blanked. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Fellowship Sunday. And you're like, yeah, that thing. Yep, that, there it is. Yep, so here we are. Monday Musings, we've been talking about a biblical theology on race. We've gone through uh, how the major storyline of the Bible, creation, fall, redemption, restoration, informs us on how to talk about race and ethnicity. And with that as the background, uh, today we're going to talk about how to have conversations about race and ethnicity. How, How can we do this in a really biblical, fruitful, gracious way? But before we get into our main topic, we have to start, as always, with the life hack. Yeah, and just even to clarify, I think this is what we have in mind is, how do you have a conversation with someone that holds a different opinion from you? Sure. I'm I'm sure all of you already know how to get together with people who think the same way as you and then talk bad about how the other people don't think as well as you do. You mm-hmm. know, that's not what we're talking about today. Yep. We're talking about if you have a differing thought uh i think this could be really helpful today for sure so the life hack today you know i was gonna go with something else but i got a new one all right so i went to the doctor for my physical Mm -hmm. and i had to go see a cardiologist because i have heart palpitations which apparently is really normal there you go um so i got something and instead of going to having to go to the doctor to get like ekgs and tests and stuff i ordered this thing off amazon card cardia mobile which was like 90 bucks on Amazon. And if I ever have heart palpitations, I just put my fingers on it and it takes my EKG there it is. and it saves it in a PDF and e- I can email it to my doctor yeah, and it cost me zero dollars. Um, and so if you are a hypochondriac like me or have ever been to a cardiologist or have had heart palpitations every now and then, this is the way to go. And I think it's more common than I initially thought it was. Yeah. So have you ever had heart palpitations? Not that I know of. Yeah, it's scary. I mine, so. mine. Some people like have the flutter. I don't have a flutter or anything, but I have like a. Sometimes my my heart will. It feels like it's skipping a beat, but really it's two beats close to each other, and then the heart correcting itself. I learned, and so it's pretty scary though. I bet so. Yeah. Well, good life hack. Cardio mobile, yeah. Yeah. Be it. healthy. Yeah. And I guess the addendum to that life hack is go get your physical and go see a doctor. Yeah. Go and be get healthy. Your physical. Yeah. Be healthy. All right, next segment is our restaurant of the month. I'm going to surprise you guys because I know my reputation is <laughs> I'm a little bougie. You know, I like the, the finer things of life. I, you know, to if I were in finer things parks club. and or is it the office? Uh, the or office. Or the, offi- the office. I'd be in the finer things club. And I would not be invited. <laughs> Correct. But uh, today I'm not going to do the finer things club. I'm going to go restaurant of the month, Papa John's. Every Friday night at our house, we have family movie night which involves my daughter, Hannah, uh, but Sarah can't talk yet, picking a Disney movie she saw like last week. And we watch a movie together, and we eat Papa John's. And it's really cheap, and it makes me happy. That's a really that's a really fun... Yeah, it's a Friday night tradition. Yeah, fun tradition. Yeah. Do you order from the app, or what do you do? I order from the app, and then Hillary works on Friday, so she picks it up on her way back. Nice. And so you, like you pick bucks. up and you pick up the points and yeah okay the points the is points. the way to go you got to go yeah. for the points that's a life hack and you're welcome two life hacks yep. <laughs> what is about it, you mine is uh, a restaurant called Mister Taco have you ever been here I don't think I have so Ford Fry who started like all the amazing restaurants yeah in like Atlanta. Super Rica yeah. um, El Felix uh, I think. The Optimist. Yeah. Um, um, JCT Kitchen. Yeah, that's all Fort Fry. Yeah. He great. was asked, if you could go to any restaurant in Atlanta, which one would you go to? And he said Mr. Taco. That's great. And that's why I went. And I will say, is it the best? I'm not sure why he said Mr. Taco. It's pretty authentic. 
uh as someone who you know is not mexican but from what i hear everyone who works there's mexican they all tell me it's very authentic uh but it's very reasonably priced and it's not food like to be honest like as a food guy the food re- review i get it's not like you put it in your mouth and you're like this is the Whoa. best thing i've ever had yeah but you're like it's cheaper than some of the other like Tex Mex stuff. It's more mm-hmm. authentic than the other Tex Mex stuff. Mm-hmm. And you eat it and you're like, this is super solid. It's right. just a really solid plate of food made authentically. There you go. For a reasonable price. Mm. And so, uh, yeah, I might try to do more of my meetings there now. Okay. I've been getting the nachos and Meredith said they were okay. And I think they're great. Mr. So, Taco. Mr. Taco. Restaurant of the month. All right, so our topic today is how to have conversations about race and ethnicity. And what we've done, you know, over the last, I guess, five weeks is we've gone through creation, fall, redemption, restoration, and how that informs how we think about and see uh, ethnicity through the main storyline of the Bible. What we want to do now is talk about how to have conversations with people that you may not agree with on everything on this topic using this framework. So for each uh, chapter in biblical theology, so to speak, we've come up with like one character quality that we think a true biblical understanding of that part of biblical theology gives us. So for creation, uh, we put respect. The the doctrine of creation should create a respect in us because we remember That whoever we're talking to, however they disagree, even if they're not Christians, they're made in the image of God. So the doctrine of the Imago Dei um, says that people are not just abstract ideas or stupid ideas or stupid people or annoying people or people that we want to put some, you know, mean nickname to or or something. Right. They're people specially made in the image of God who deserve our respect. Yeah, and I was even just thinking now that I'm going to add kind of an addendum to this. Uh, I'd love to for to hear your thoughts on this. What if one of our listeners is listening and saying, I would love to have a conversation with someone who looks different than me, thinks different than me, had a different experience than me, but I don't know anyone. What do you, what do you say to that person? Um, make new friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. I, I think... I think that's part of the issue a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Do you think that people are have formed these opinions in a kind of a bubble of your own like-minded thinking, mm-hmm. people who look like you, think like you? And I think part of the Amigo oh Day in this respect is maybe question if all your friend, if you're white and all your friends are white and think that like you, if you're black all your friends are black and think like you, if you're Asian, you know, whatever, we go down the line. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Yeah. I think it, maybe this conversation sometimes starts with that. Mm -hmm. Are my opinions and the way I think, and I think I'm right, and I think just formulated that by the same train of thinking, Mm -hmm. I think part of the Imago Dei is, and part of this respect is understanding that God uh, has made us all in his his image. That's what we all have the same, but he's all made us also different. Yeah. Um, and even the conversation sometimes by even recognizing that in yourself, that maybe I formulated these, maybe that all these conversations that we see blown up on Facebook and social media and in the media is because we've all kind of stuck our roots in our own camp, in our own bubble yeah, without seeing this in others Mm -hmm. to even begin with. Mm -hmm. And maybe if you don't even have someone that you can can have a conversation that's different, maybe asking yourself why is a great start. And like you said, make, and then take that step to make new friends. Right. Right. I mean, seriously. (laughs) No, but, but yeah, I mean, I I think, you know, one of the tendencies we have is, uh, (laughs) you know, someone might say, well, I have no respect for someone who's a cultural Marxist. <laughs> right. Or on the flip side, I have no respect for someone who's a blatant racist. Right. I'm like, well, okay, those those categories and people do do exist, um, but probably most people don't fit into that mold as, as well as you'd like them to. Right. But also, like, 
Yeah, okay, so maybe they are. Let's just assume for a second the person you want to talk with is a cultural Marxist or is a racist. Right. They are also— Because that, that, they, they, they both they, exist, they exist out there. Yeah. yeah. Um, they're also human beings made in the image of God. Yeah. And, and if we start with this combative, mm. I'm going to assume the mm. worst in you. Well, you're never going to have a good conversation. Yeah, that's um, a good word. And and I we just need to remember we're talking to— human beings <laughs> yeah uh and yeah well, like you said i mean social media has made this a lot worse mm-hmm. um I, I, because people become you've called it abstraction right, right? We, we basically take uh we take the personhood out of it mm-hmm. and we take the like weakest most dangerous interpretation of someone's argument and we make that them right so, for example, if you hate CRT, which is an idea, right? It's, right. Uh, CRT is not a person. Right. But you say you are, believe in CRT. You are that. So you are CRT, and I hate CRT, so I hate you. Yes. I mean, that's the logic of how right. people get there, right. right? So I think the doctrine of creation should produce respect in our conversations. We're talking to people, <laughs> not just ideas, and people deserve respect in the tone that we talk with. Mm-hmm. Tone is super important. Tone is... is body language. Body language. And, you know, I think um, one of the things I've kind of noticed in this conversation, and um, honestly, I actually began to see with the rise of Donald Trump, I guess you could say, is th- th- there's been a... Th- in kind of conservative circles especially... I think there's like this feeling of being nice hasn't gotten us anywhere. Mm. Being nice didn't work for Mitt Romney. Right. He got destroyed against Barack Obama in the presidential election. So th- th- there, there was a part of like this, like being mean works. Right. And we need tough people. And I mean, sure, we, we need tough people. We can talk about politics, whatever. But um, I just worry that... Um, we, we, we have almost, in some, like, corners of evangelicalism, we've begun to, like, value meanness as, like, you know, strength. Own, own the libs kind, yeah. kind of thing. And, um, you know, whether you're conservative or liberal, if you're, like, in this conversation, if you just want to own the other side, mm-hmm. I mean, that might feel good for a moment. And But what have you accomplished? What have you done? Yeah. You know, um, so it, desiring to own someone doesn't really reflect a value of respect. Yeah. And I would say to those people too, like a lot of times when people talk about that, they're like trying to change policy or whatever. And I'm like, I think there's a time and place of going to your school board and saying what you're teaching is not good or whatever. Mm-hmm. But we're not talking about that. We're talking about like a conversation with like someone of a different ethnicity or someone who you disagree with right right and like not just to change policy or whatever but just to treat them like a human right and sit down with them and i would say this too if someone if you have a conversation with someone and they are combative towards you you have a choice you can be combative back or you can treat them with imago day and i don't know if you've ever seen this but if someone is mean to you and you give them the loving kindness of God in they return. Don't, they don't know what to do. They have no idea what to do. Yeah. You you actually want to quote unquote beat them, love them well and show them respect. And freeze them out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And, and and just so, you know, if I punch right, I should punch left. Right. I, I think I think Joe Biden has also been very, very divisive in how he talks about people and, and sought yeah. to just own the other side. So you know, I, I want to make clear this isn't like conservatives have this problem and liberals don't no or it's both sides <laughs> and unfortunately that has bled into the church and how we've had conversations yeah and we've said this over and over again and i'll say it again in this podcast if you are listening to this podcast and you have someone in mind like oh they need to change how they talk to people yeah you should turn the volume up <laughs> yeah this we're not for you yeah we're not talking about them we're, we're talking, talking about to you. we're talking to you yeah. and you shouldn't look into yourself i mean even when we do this podcast i'm always thinking oh man where can i, I grow to, in yeah. this because i'm not neither of us are perfect at mm-hmm. this either mm-hmm. um 
but yeah yeah it's good so doctrine of creation says respect the doctrine of the fall we say should produce humility in our conversations we are sinners and even those of us who have been saved by christ and redeemed we still struggle with sin uh which means we're still um we see through things dimly and and we don't um we don't have all the perfect answers and our on this side of heaven our motives are always still going to be kind of mixed with sin in there yeah so we just need to be humble enough to admit that we don't see the whole picture we are still wrestling with our own fallenness and our own sinful motives right um which means you know we don't have the whole answers our our, our theology is not perfect our understanding about god and the world's not perfect it's broken <laughs> by sin so we need to be willing to engage in these conversations with a humble attitude yeah it's kind of like the way i kind of see this too is like i always heard this if you uh, if you point the finger at someone, there's three fingers pointing right back at you. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, why don't we come in with that kind of humility to realize when we say, you know, essentially when we say, you know, you have the wrong view of wherever you fall on this issue. Yeah. We're saying you are a sinner and have a sinful view. And we forget that we are also sinners right. and have a s- sinful, you know, our, our lenses in which we see the world are they're all cracked by sin. Mm-hmm. Even when you have a gospel worldview, it's still not perfect, right? Well, and you know, I I think this um, the the left's overemphasis on like systemic racism and everything being racist, right? Every, I think has caused like the right to overcorrect, overcorrect mm-hmm. to where nothing is racist. So the right. left is everything is racist. The right is nothing is racist. And how dare you ever call me a racist, right? Without like, you know, we went through, if, if you go back on the podcast on the fall, we went through, I think, seven different ethnic sins. And it's like, yeah, all, all of us do like have ethnic sins in, in varying degrees and yeah. varying seasons. And, and in different ways. To, like, yeah. You can, like, that's just reality. So, right. of course, that's probably like going to your sin is going to affect how you view things and have this conversation and... You don't have to run from that. You just need to be humble and admit that, yeah, you you part of your motivations are stained by sin, even in this conversation. So right. just be humble about it. Yeah. I think the next thing under this humility piece is just being self-aware of where, where do your thoughts come from? How were they developed, right? Mm-hmm. And so I would say, and the warning we would give is be aware of projecting onto others something you either learn from someone else or experience from something else. So for example, um, I've talked to a lot of minorities who say, uh, you know, this thing happened to me in the church at school with a, with a police officer. So that means all white churches, all white schools, Mm -hmm. all white police officers must be evil. Right. And what you're doing is you're projecting. Yep onto someone else hurts from the past. Yeah. Be very careful from that because, um, it's good. You know, like, uh, you know, for example, if I, you know, I was bullied as a kid sometimes, Mm -hmm. right. Like back in the day, but what if I blamed you for it because you were a white guy? Right. That'd be, that'd be, that's not fair. That that doesn't even make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And what we do is, you know, there's a term, um, or there's a phrase, Unless we heal our wounds, uh, we'll bleed on people who didn't cut you. Yeah. And so I I think that's what happens a lot with these conversations is you're talking to someone and you, you represent something to them. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say if you're the one projecting, be very aware. Are you doing that? Mm, That's right. Are you bleeding on someone who didn't cut you? This happens all the time. Right. And there's a lot of fingers being pointed um, but to realize, yeah, a lot of times people have, and, and you could do this from like, like if you're in the majority culture or in America, like if you're a white person, you learn things from your parents, you've mm-hmm. had experiences mm-hmm. um, with different things, but not if you were hurt or if you had a way of thinking that you were taught 
Well, don't project that onto some someone, right? Learn. That's good. Grow. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. I think another part of this humility is recognizing that in a broken world, uh, we have broken language. Yeah. And take take for example. Is there systemic racism in America? You and I were talking about this before right. the podcast. Well, dang. I mean, let's define that before we have that conversation. Let's define our terms. Let's yeah. define systemic and let's define racism. Right. And, and part of, you know, we're, we're just in a broken world. And I think the Tower of Babel is a beautiful example of that. Beautiful might be the wrong adjective. But our languages are all mixed our, our words are all mixed we don't understand each other right that, that's part of the fall and so we we need to really be careful to define our words when we speak that's kind of part of this like humility that should come from the fall. I want to kind of recognize that we might be speaking different languages and so we need to before we throw terms at each other and throw you know um kind of nicknames at each other let's define our terms first yeah no i think that's super helpful you know i was even having a conversation with uh, a, a black christian brother of mine mm-hmm. and uh we were using the word systemic racism for like 30 minutes and then finally i think <laughs> like, wait, he wait, was wait. like what do you mean by that i was like wait what do you mean by that and we were talking two different things we had a 30 minute conversation yeah explaining different concepts and the reason we were missing each other is because we weren't we using the term differently. I, I was using like like day-to-day like personal racism mm-hmm. and he and he was using systemic racism to explain the same point and i was using systemic racism as like you know like if the government did something in a mm-hmm. system mm-hmm. in in a structure and he was like oh i've never even heard of that but that makes more sense and as we got on the same page we i mean it was a I was very blessed by the conversation, but it That's just hin- it just hinged on and how how many times does that happen? We throw out these terms, and we don't mean the same thing, yeah. right? Even when we get to our CRT podcast, there's like three or four definitions of CRT, right? And most of them we disagree with, but there's you know, spoiler, but there's like, you know, it depends on how you define it's it. Def- it's, yeah, you can define it in a way where it's like, well, that's not that bad. Yeah, that's not like what most people think it is, and but it's like. You have to define these terms. Yeah. yeah. So creation should produce respect in our conversations. The fall should produce humility in our conversations. And the doctrine of redemption, we said, should produce grace in our conversations. Absolutely. Right. We have been brought near, right? The, those who were once at enmity with one another have been brought near. The dividing wall of hostility, Paul says, has been broken down through the cross. We are a new family in Christ. We belong to one another. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. And this should produce an attitude of grace toward one another. Um, You know, there's a few ways to break this down. I mean, grace toward one another. One, I I mean, it means because you're my brother and sister in Christ, like, I'm gonna assume the best in you. Right, you're someone that's been redeemed. I'm I'm someone that's yeah. been redeemed. Um, it, instead of assuming because he doesn't think with me, he's he think like me. He's a racist, or because he right. doesn't think like me, he's a Marxist. Right. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna bend over backwards to assume the best in you. Yeah, Th- that's grace. Yeah, especially as we're talking to a, a brother or sister in Christ. Right. If yeah. you're talking to a professing brother or sister in Christ. Yeah. Uh, and you know what? I, I understand that one pushback is, well, not everyone who says Lord, Lord is really saved. And I'm like, yes. Sure. But I'm like, the, it's going to take some burden of proof to, you got a, someone professing Christ, trusting in Jesus' death, burial, resurrection to, to be saved. You're going to have to work hard to convince me that person's not a Christian. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go toward an attitude of, of acceptance if someone's saying, I, I'm leaning on Jesus and his word and Jesus and his work to save me. Right. I, I'm going to go in assuming you're, you're a brother or right. sister. Um, so, yeah, we should assume the best. I think you have a good point about ignorance that you brought up. Yeah, we should show grace towards ignorance. So, honestly, most of <laughs> these conversations, like, spiral into despair because I honestly think is most people are just ignorant. Most people aren't. I, once again, I do believe racism is out there, but in 2021, I, I just think most 
most of what is called racism is, is a lot of his ignorance. Mm-hmm. This is from both sides of the aisle. I don't care if you're black, white, Hispanic, Asian, or uh, what Coach Boone would say in Remember Titans. I don't care if you're black, blue, green, red, or white, you know, defense Man. on this bus, offense on this bus. That's such a good movie. Uh, oh, it's so good. Gosh. Um, a lot of it is just ignorance because, uh, like, just because you're a minority doesn't mean you understand all other minorities, or the yeah, or or the ma- for them, yeah. or, or the majority culture, right? Right. Most of what white people that I've heard quote unquote say racist things were just ignorant comments towards me, right? It, not like straight up racist, like, hey, I, and I know once again they're all racist. Yeah, yeah y- you as a listener may have experienced that. Um, I have too. It's just most of the time it's just ignorance. But I think even in this conversation. What I've seen a lot is I've even seen this at a, a like a conference where there was a black panel and this white student from a really small town in Georgia went up and asked a really like it, it kind of it was just a very ignorant question. But he was just trying to learn. He yeah. was saying, I've never heard these concepts before. I grew up in a small town with mm-hmm. 700 people and, you know, like uh, everyone knows each other and all this stuff. Like I've never heard any concepts. Can you? Well, I mean, that was his background. He didn't say that. But can mm-hmm. you explain this concept yeah. to me? And you know what they did? They laughed at him mm-hmm. at a conference in front of, like, hundreds of people. Yeah. You think that guy's ever going to no. want to listen or learn nope. anymore? No. I, I think what happens a lot is I, I, I saw this on Facebook last summer a ton where it was like, white people need to learn this. And then when white people are like, wait, will you explain this to me? They're like, you're so racist. And I was like, I'm like, wait, wait a second. You can't tell them to stop being ignorant and stop being racist. And when people are trying to learn to shut them down and throw it back in their face, like, like we need to show grace. Mm -hmm. And this isn't just, you know, white people to minorities. Like, um, I, I'll give an anecdote here. So, you know, Hillary and I went through a season of, of infertility, uh, before we had the girls, and uh, some very, very well-meaning people said some very hurtful things. Mm. We, uh, again, in general, I think we don't know how to deal with suffering. So uh, this is not just a thing about race. It's so, I mean, the like, <laughs> uh, let's see, I'm just trying to think. The, uh, I had a friend who had that. Okay, that doesn't help me at all. Uh, God will give you a kid. I, I You don't know that shouldn't say that um there's a lot of at least Mm. well at least you yeah you know a lot of these things um you know having kids is kind of tough anyway right like a lot of things people like they don't know what to do and there are two ways you can do that we could have just exploded on them and be like do you realize how hurtful that statement was right or do you assume the best this is a brother or sister that's right. trying to comfort us yeah and they're really sucking at it really <laughs> right. bad right but w- w- give grace right so this is not just in race it, it's in a lot of areas in life we just want to absolutely and they're just ignorant yeah they weren't like anti-infertility people yeah they were just ignorant of how hurtful their words were right um so yeah giving grace toward ignorance um I think also, like, giving grace toward one another when we distinguishing between the gospel of grace and an application of the gospel of grace. Yes, that's a great way to put it. And so the gospel of grace, 1 Corinthians 15, you know, delivered to you what is of first importance, that Christ died, that he was buried, that he was raised in accordance with the scriptures, like the cross and the resurrection being the center of the gospel. A, a lot of times what you hear people say is um if you don't agree like this is a gospel issue right like race this and, is a gospel issue and they'll say and if you don't do blank right how can you go to a march Christian? you know support reparations do you know I, i've heard a lot of things mm-hmm. thrown out there this is justice and right. god is a god of justice if you don't yeah and if you don't do blank how can you even consider yourself a Christian? Right. I'm like, whoa, wait a second. And I think what happens there is we actually have moved to legalism. We have. Away from grace. It's Christ plus 
your version of racial justice. Yes. Yeah. And and yeah, often what it is is not. And this, I've seen this. I've seen white people post this. I've seen black people right. post this. I've seen Asian people post yeah. this. I mean, like, yeah. And, and often it's not. This is a gospel issue. Christ has destroyed the dividing wall of hostility between peoples, mm-hmm. and we are one person now. And I would say to that, yes. Yes. Yeah. But often it's, and you must accept my exact application of that as gospel. Right. And I'm just saying, l- let's distinguish between the grace of the gospel, just the pure, unadulterated, you know, Christ came to die for sinners, to redeem a people for himself from every tribe, tongue, language, and nation. And you must repent and believe in that gospel to be saved. Let's. That's the message of grace. Right. And then there are a lot of ways to apply that message into the conversation of race and ethnicity. Right. Let's just be gracious in distinguishing between the gospel and the applying that mm-hmm. in our modern context to this issue. Big for, difference. For, for example, James tells us we need to look after widows and orphans. Yeah. But not everyone has the same passion for justice for widows and orphans. Sure. So would it be fair for someone at the church, any church, to say, if you don't adopt a child, how you, could you call yourself a Christian? And, and I think, right, some people on – you have extremes on every side, and I think there are some people on extremes on that side drift toward that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. That, that if you really believe the gospel, how can you, you not see adopt. this? This is I, – I so clearly see this as right. Yeah. If you don't see it as clearly as I do mm-hmm. and apply it as I do, how could you even consider yourself a Christian? Right. Yeah, and I would say be careful. You've, yeah, you've, this happens with abortion. Yep. Um, but this also happens with race. Be mm-hmm. very careful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we've said this. It's like, okay, so, so if we took the same principle of like being involved against racial injustice and we applied it to abortion— Right. Is, is it fair to say, if you haven't marched in front of an abortion clinic, how could you even call yourself? Yeah, abortion? yeah. So, again, like, sh- should Christians oppose abortion? Absolutely we should. It's right. murder. Uh, how each individual Christian should be involved in opposing that evil you got to give greater leeway to that. Because I would say, we have clearly, if you, you guys haven't figured this out, we are against racial injustice and we are for the justice of all people including those who are, have been persecuted because of their race sure. or ethnicity but even me and you probably have different applications of what we for think that looks like go about that. and we sure. we are very similar in how right. we think about a lot of things right. and so we definitely have different views from different people different pastors mm-hmm. even in our city mm-hmm. and i think from my view i'm like that's okay yeah there's different ways and God uses different people differently, and I think there, it's good that you have more than one way to apply this. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, absolutely. You, you know, I think another way we apply grace into these conversations is when we recognize, especially if you're dealing with a, a Christian, a brother or sister. Man, I'm just thinking of like, like my my biological sister, my like actual sister. Yeah, like I care about the hurts that she's experienced mm-hmm. in life. I care about, e- even even if they were like her fault or they were the result of something else that I didn't even think she should be applying into her mind, right? Like, it doesn't matter to me. Like, I care if like my sister is hurting. Right. I care. Yeah. And I think that's an application of grace. Like, the, if our brothers and sisters are hurting, even if you're like, you know what? I don't think you should be hurting because of that. If you're if you're a white person, <laughs> and when George Floyd died, and all your black friends or a lot of your black friends were like, "This hurts me so much." If your knee jerk reaction was, "Why? It shouldn't." Okay, maybe that's a fair perspective. Right. You you might be right. Maybe it shouldn't hurt them, but they are right now. Right. So so I think I think grace and atmosphere of grace is like. If you're my brother and sister in Christ, I care that you're hurting. I care what your backstory is that led this event to hurt you. And I want to know you. I want to know you as a person, as an individual. I want to know your background, your story, your hurts, why this is hurting Mm -hmm. you. Um, 
I care more about hearing your hurts than I do correcting what I might believe mm. to be incorrect hurts. Right. Yeah. I, I think the analogy I always use is like if you're like a kid and you like ride your skateboard down the hill and go off a ramp and do something like really stupid and then you like land and you like break your leg and your leg is like shattered. The correct response is not run over there and be like, you idiot. Like, you're so stupid. I'm not even going to call the ambulance because you're so stupid. Right. It's like, no. Like, you're like, oh, my gosh, let me help you. And then later you're like, hey, don't do that. Right. Right. Like, there's a time and place for it. And I think there's – I think even listening to – I know in my experience as I was learning about this, there was – I I worked with some – uh, I had some black coworkers at the ministry I worked for, and and I disagreed with maybe half of their conclusions. Sure, but what was really helpful was just hearing their stories and their life experiences. And you know, a lot of times, you know, we talk about as Christians, like it, it seems like we talk about it like experiences don't matter, but they do. They, sure, they yeah. do make, a, it's not the most important thing, right? You can't let an experience define you, mm-hmm. but it, it it does influence how they see the world. Sure. And so getting to know and listening to their experience helped me show compassion when things would happen. So if you remember the South Carolina shooting, when that guy went into, the white guy went into the church and shot up um, the church. Right. And we were to, I remember we the news broke when we were together and uh knowing their experience i understood why they were scared and why they were crying my my coworkers sure. and so we were able to pray together and mourn together um even though once again their conclusions on how do we fix these things may mm-hmm. have been different than mine but we were in it together as brothers in christ even in those moments and and so i think it's just helpful to remember uh to listen, to have compassion, um, to listen to people's experiences so that we can show grace and we can mourn with those who mourn with tragedies like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, just a, a culture of grace, or, uh, reminding ourselves that we're brothers and sisters in Christ, um, I, I think goes a long way. And so we want to care for one another's hurts. Um, and, you know, when people are hurting, it you got to know when to just cry with people and yeah. when to come in with other thoughts or other ways to look right. at it. Or uh, I think too often you know. it's, oh, I didn't experience that and I don't get it. So it, your experience must not matter. Right. It must not be validated. And yes. I think we invalidate each other too too much. Yeah. And, and you know, I, you know, as we're punching right and punching left, uh, I, I think, yeah, I think something that uh, it, another helpful thought is also I, I've seen this a lot when minorities do this to majority culture in U.S. Um, minorities doing this white people, but when something bad happens to a white person, the thought process is almost when well, you deserve that, <laughs> you know. You look at all of this, you know, oppression you caused all these years. So now you deserve. You, you had it coming to you. You had it coming to you. You you got what you deserved. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I would just say be careful with that because that's that's not the gospel. Yeah, right? the gospel is, grace. Yeah. yeah, the gospel is the equalizer here of all things, right? That the sins of, of all of the people who are in Christ were punished. The wrath of God came down on those, on, on Jesus on the cross. Yeah. Right? And so that, that idea of... I hope they get what they deserve is not really a gospel thought because we should want them to receive grace because for us, we didn't get what we deserved, which is God's wrath. Mm -hmm. Jesus took it for us, right? And so I think at the end of the day, even if we talk about justice, God is not mocked, right? Yeah. Ultimately, justice belongs to the Lord. And at the end of the day, all the accounts will come back. You know, if you're an accounting major or whatever, all the balance sheet will, will balance Debits out. Debits and credits will, yeah. Yeah, right. and we don't have to worry about that. And so instead of wanting harm on others for whatever reason, whether it's your experience or, or whatever, we can want grace and, mm. and compassion and f- good for others even when they're wronged or are in the wrong because Christ is the equalizer here. That's good. That's good. Yeah, so the doctrine of creation says that our conversations about race and ethnicity should be filled with respect. 
The doctrine of the fall says they should be filled with humility. The doctrine of redemption says they should be filled with grace as brothers and sisters in Christ who have been redeemed by the same Lord. And finally, the doctrine of restoration or consummation should fill our conversations with patience. Uh, We recognize that we aren't there yet, and we won't be there yet until Jesus returns and restores all things. So we're going to keep having these conversations. Bad things are going to keep happening. Racism will continue to exist until Jesus comes again. Right. We'll say ignorant and sometimes sinful things. We'll need to forgive and be forgiven. Um, We're going to have different perspectives on things. And that's kind of the way it's going to be. Yeah. And so we just need to be patient with each other. Yeah, and I think sometimes it's like you have this conversation. If when you land the plane, it's like I don't feel like we solved all of the world's problems. I would say, yep, yep. yeah, exactly. <laughs> you, you didn't, right? It's it's impossible. We can't on this side of eternity. Yeah, and I think what al- allowing us to, uh, I think too much with topics like these, and especially this one on race, we want the problem to be solved now today yeah yep. this instant mm-hmm. and i think that's a good desire in a lot of ways yeah. but when you put your hope in that right. i think that's where it starts to get a little off because our hope is not in the now it's in the eternal and we're in new heavens and new earth like we talked about in our restoration or consummation podcast yeah it, go, go ahead yeah well it's, it's like our, our hope is not in our uniformity right in how we view things yeah our hope is in our unity in Christ right. who will come again and make all things new. Yeah. And I think unity is not uniformity. Yeah. And so, I mean, give us like a 30 second like synopsis of that because I just think that's so, it's a couple letters in a word, right? Unity, uniformity right. M- makes the complete difference because I think when people think about unity in the situation, they're thinking uniformity. Right. But that's not, it, that, that's not practical. Yeah. We, we have to be united on the essentials of the faith. Uh, you know, we talked about 1 Corinthians 15, the, the gospel which was preached to you. Christ has died. He's in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised on the third day and appeared to many witnesses. And the way to life everlasting is repentance of your sin and trust in Christ alone. Like, let's stand on that. Let's let that be our main story. That's right. our source of unity, Christ and, and his and gospel. I think we see that unity when there's just an abundance of forgiveness. Yes. Because when you have been, if you've wronged or been wronged, which we have, but especially mm-hmm. when it comes to race, we can be reminded that we sinned against the holy God and he took the punishment on the cross, right? right. He forgave. And if you're asking, how how can I forgive this? Yep. The answer is you got to look to the cross yep. in order to to be able to. You, you have to pray that God would change your heart in that because you don't need to muster up, in a sense, forgiveness in yourself. You you We, we get that from the Holy Spirit and God transforming our hearts. Mm-hmm. And so the unity comes from the gospel and comes from forgiveness, which I think is so important right. here. Um, and but, but talk about the uniformity a little well, bit. Well, yeah. You, I mean, uniformity is, so how do we apply that gospel and that truth to black and white and Asian communities in the United States in the 21st century with the history that we have. Okay, well, yeah, we're, we're going to have different solutions to how we think we can be more harmonious as a society. Right. And even within the church, we're going to think differently on that. And I just say, like, let's just give each other room to— we're still on the left side of the new heavens and new earth. Yeah. And so there's still sin. We're not going to view everything the same. Right. Jesus is going to set everything right eventually. And we, we should we should work toward, we should labor toward justice. We should labor toward unity. Uh, we should absolutely labor toward uh, a good society for all. But uh, sometimes we're going to arrive just on, on different ways of getting there. Yeah. And we just got to be patient with each other. So... I think that should really season our conversations. So uh, we've talked about how to have conversations about race and ethnicity. Creation means they should be filled with respect. The fall means they should be filled with humility. Redemption means they should be filled with grace. And restoration means they should be filled with patience. 
Any closing thoughts? Yeah, I just got two. Uh, first, uh, your recap or your nutshelling. Thank you. Uh, nutshelling, yes. Yes. Uh, Meredith always says that's she loves that about your sermons. Man. And uh, it's, su- it's super helpful. It's funny I, listening to you do that. Thank you, Meredith. Well, I, I have to say, so there was a guy at uh, my old church, PCBC, named Brian Mullen. Brian, if you're listening, thank you. And uh, Brian, like, trains corporate executives for how to have television interviews. That's like what he does as a job. That's crazy. And so I asked him for some sermon feedback one time, some of the best feedback I've ever gotten. But he talked about recapping. So Meredith, I will say thank you, and then I will point toward Brian Mullen to a thank you for teaching me how to recap. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a, I forget to give people credit, not because I'm trying to steal information. I just don't remember where I got it from, you know? <laughs> it was so. uh, I think it was Kevin DeYoung that said, you know, the, the first time you say something, you say so-and-so said, and then the second time you say it, you say, as I've always said. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And so, uh, and, and the second closing thought is, if this podcast helped you have a conversation, we, we'd love to hear how that conversation went. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, once again, we, we, we don't want just a podcast that passes along information. We, we really help. We really hope this podcast helps you live out your faith in the real world. Absolutely. Yeah, that's our hope. So we think we have three episodes left in this series. Uh, next week, we're going to use the creation, fall, redemption, restoration motif uh, to critique Christian nationalism. And then the week after that, we're going to use it to critique CRT, critical race theory. So everyone's equal opportunity to be mad at us. Equal opportunity yeah. offender here at Monday Musings. And then the final week, we're going to do kind of the frequently asked questions, kind of random stuff that we've heard from you uh, and go from there. So should be fun. But thanks for joining us. And we look forward to talking to you next week. Bye.